the Joy Fund, a little twist, and money hack on the 50-30-20 budget to help you pay down debt and still enjoy life along the way. I have all the details and what you need to know right here in the video, so let's get right into it. First off, let me ask you this much. Do you have any outstanding debt right now that you really just want to pay off and get out of your face so that you can move on with your life and not worry about all of these outstanding bills and debts hanging over you? Well, I think that's the story for a lot of people right now. Well, in this video, I'm going to be talking about a little twist and a money hack to a very popular budgeting strategy, the 50-30-20 rule, and how you can apply this little twist to pay down your debt quickly and move on with your life. And ultimately, you're probably still going to enjoy your life throughout the process of paying down debt. Let's be real with ourselves for just a second. Is paying down debt fun? Honestly, no, <laughs> it's not fun at all. That's probably why most of us don't ever do it very fast at all because it's not a fun process and realistically, it's a lot more fun to take that money that we probably should be using to pay down debt and to go out with our friends, go out to dinner and do whatever else we want, travel and buy all the things that we want simply because that's a lot more fun and honestly, it's a lot more fulfilling than it is to send off a check every single month or an electronic payment and pay down debt not fun. But I can tell you this much, once you pay down that debt, you're going to be so much more excited and thrilled to go out and do things. And ultimately, you're going to feel like a ton of bricks have been lifted off of your shoulders. So let's get into it and talk about this little money twist and little hack to this very popular budgeting strategy and how this can pay down your debt relatively quickly here. Now, again, if you've been watching the videos here on the channel for any length of time, I've been coming out recently with a lot of different videos talking about budgeting and how you can pay down debt quickly. This is just another strategy. There's a ton of different strategies out there of how you can pay down debt quickly. So this is just another idea. And again, like I say in all the videos, you just need to find something that works best with you, your personality, and of course, your personal situation because it's different for everybody. It's not a one size fits all approach. There's a different budgeting strategy for everybody out there. You just got to find the right one that works for you. So maybe this will be another one that works well for you. And again, you just got to keep trying until we find something that actually fits for you and your personality and of course, your personal situation. All right. So let's get into it. First off, let me take just a second here and talk about the very popular 50, 30, 20 rule. Here's what it comes down to. So basically you take your after-tax income. In other words, your, your take-home pay, right? So let's just say, for example, that you earn $1,000 a week. Uh, yeah, let's just say $1,000 a week. And after taxes, you take home $700. Ouch, right? Well, anyway, you get to take home $700. That would be your take home pay, your after tax pay, okay? So, whatever you're taking home uh, would be your after tax pay. So, that is the number that we want to work with. So, whatever it happens to be on a monthly basis, a weekly basis, however you see fit for you, take these numbers and that's where we're going to calculate from. All right, so here's the rule that I want to share with you. And then I'll show you the little twist that I want to share with you based on this very popular budgeting strategy. All right, so the 50 30 20 rule comes down to this you take 50% of your after. Uh, your after-tax income, your take-home pay that you would use for necessities, needs, things like food, gas in your car, um, you know, insurance on your car, uh, rent, a mortgage, utilities, your phone bill, all kinds of things that basically you have to pay on an ongoing monthly basis. If you don't pay it, it's probably not going to be a pretty picture, right? So that's what this 50% would be used for. In this case, the $700 example that I gave you, it would be 30, uh, sorry, $350 is would be allocated to that because that is 50% of that $700. Now next, we take the 30% and generally this rule would suggest that 30% of that would go towards your wants. I'm going to be honest with you. Realistically, to me, that seems like a very high percentage of your take-home pay going to your wants. But again, that's just me. I like to err on the side of a little bit more caution just because for me, I like to kind of, you know, not spend as much today so that I can have more tomorrow. That's just kind of how I approach things. But again, that's just where it works for me and my personality and my comfort level. It's going to be different for everybody. But the 50, 30, uh, 20 uh, rule comes down to that. 50% you peeled off for your needs and your necessities. And now 30% would be allocated for your wants wants, whatever your wants would be. The new latest greatest AirPods, the new latest greatest iPhone, the new latest greatest laptop, or whatever it happens to be, the new car that you're saving up for. Honestly, it all comes down to that stuff. So that would be the 30%. And now the 20% would last be for savings. So then you'd peel off the extra 20, throw it into your savings. And again, that would be for like future things uh, out there. Maybe buying a house at some point, maybe, you know, whatever it happens to be, saving for retirement, whatever all these things are, uh, that is what the 20% would come in at that point. However, now let's talk about a little bit of a money hack and a little twist here on this to help you pay down that debt more quickly because realistically, let's just say this much. If you are paying down debt right now, 
when you have debt hanging over you right now, would you feel a little bit more relieved and more financially stable if that debt disappeared from you? I'm gonna go out on a limb here and go ahead and say, yeah, I think all of us would probably feel a little bit more financially secure if all of a sudden that debt that you're currently paying on right now all of a sudden just disappeared. Be pretty nice, right? I think you'd be pretty happy, you'd be pretty proud, and you'd probably be feeling like, I'm a free person. I can do whatever I want now. I don't have this bill hanging over me every single month, right? All right, now let me tell you the hack and the twist here. Here's what it comes down to, and this is the Joy account. Yes, it's still gonna be pretty fun, even though it's, you know, maybe not gonna be as fun as you'd want it to be. At the end of the day, the whole objective here is to pay down debt, because once you get on the other side of that debt, guess what? It's gonna be really fun. It's gonna be even better, right? So, a little bit of pain today, a little bit of struggle today is gonna result in a lot more pleasure and fun tomorrow. Tomorrow. Anyway, let's talk through the hack here. All right, so here's what it comes down to. Rather than the 50, 30, 20 rule, we're gonna change it to 50, 40, 10 rule. Now, let me talk you the, through the details on this one. Again, the same applies. You take 50% of your take-home pay. It's always based on your take-home pay because that's what you really get. When you earn $1,000 a week, you don't get $1,000. You get about 700 after tax, uh, uh, taxes are taken out. So again, it's gonna be different for everybody, but Let's just use the same example that I used earlier. $700 is your take home per week. Again, just an example here. You take 50% of that and you peel it off for your necessities, your needs. Nothing changes there. Again, your mortgage, your rent, your utilities, whatever it happens to be within the necessities, food, that's another key one. Uh, that's where the necessities come in and 50% of your take home pay is allocated to that. Next, 40% is allocated toward debt pay down. I know the dreaded words that everybody wants to hear. Seriously, you're telling me to take 40% of my take-home pay, the work that I put in, the hours I put in, all the time that I put in working for the man, and all of a sudden I'm, you're gonna tell me to take 40% of that every single week or every single month and give it away in debt pay down? Yeah, right, that's what I'm saying here. Yeah, unfortunately it's not fun, but I can tell you this much. It's gonna help you out in the future. Here's the thing, if you pay down that debt quickly, you're gonna be so much more relieved when you get on the other side of that debt and you, it is all gone, the balance is now zero, you're gonna feel pretty, pretty excited and you're gonna feel like an absolutely free person. So yes, focus today so that you can go wild tomorrow, right? <laughs> all right, so 40% is gonna be allocated to debt pay down. If you're very diligent about this, again, it's gonna take some time. Everybody's debt is different. One person might have $1,000 of debt. Somebody else might have $5,000 somebody else might have 10,000, somebody else might have 50,000. Ouch. I hope that's not your case, but that's the situation for some people right now. So, you would take 40% of your after-tax pay, uh, after your, your take-home pay, and you allocate that toward debt pay down. Now, again, it could be on a weekly basis, it could be bi-weekly, it could be monthly, whatever you see fit for you and your situation. Now, last, the last 10%. You set that aside of your take-home pay. In this case, for the example that I gave, the $700 per uh, week uh, was the take-home pay. In this case, it'd be $70. Guess what you do with that 70? It's your joy count. You go whatever, you go and do whatever you want. You go wild, you buy whatever you want. You have no care in the world on that money. You just have fun. You take that 70 and you just do whatever you want with it. Anything, doesn't matter. You can go out to eat with your friends. You can go out and buy something that you don't need, but you want. <laughs> you can go out to get your hair done, get a manicure, pedicure. Honestly, it doesn't matter. Anything that you want with it, take that money and just have fun with it. Now, here's the thing. Yes, it's only $70, but at the end of the day, are you gonna start to be a little bit creative on how you spend that money? Especially these days, as prices are jacked up on literally everything, are you gonna be a little bit more cautious about how you spend that? Are you thinking that maybe, hmm, I think I could probably pass on the expensive $50 dinner out with friends this week, and maybe I'll go and treat myself to something really fun that I really want right now that's exactly $65, and I'll have, after taxes, I'll have about $70 into it, right? So again, make sure that you don't exceed that 70, you can only spend up to that 10% that you've set aside for your joy account. And again, the whole idea behind this is to build momentum, to build encouragement, and to show you that, yes, even though you're paying down debt very rapidly and you're allocating a huge percentage of your weekly or monthly income toward your debt pay down, you can still have a pretty fun time. And I can tell you this much, if you actually stick to this, uh, this little money hack and this little twist on this, if you actually stick to it and actually allocate that 10% to your joy account, and you actually only spend the 10%, not a penny more, because if you, if you spend a penny more today, guess what you're gonna do next week? You're gonna spend a dollar more. Guess what you're gonna do the week after that? You're gonna spend an extra five. Guess what you're gonna do the week after that? You're gonna spend an extra 10. And before you know it, the whole plan is uh, all messed up and you have to start over again, right? But here's the thing. 
you're gonna start to get very creative. You're gonna start to find some different ideas and you're gonna think, hey, rather than going out to eat with my friends and paying $50 to eat down, uh, sit down at an all-you-can-eat sushi buffet, why don't I just go to the local grocery store, get some fresh uh, sushi for, I don't know, $20 for two rolls or something like this, and I can still have $50 to spare. Not bad, right? So you can start getting some creative ideas and maybe you can invite your friends over to your place or you can go over to your, uh, their place and you can all do the same thing. Rather than going to this all-you-can-eat buffet and eating all the sushi you could ever dream of for $50 a person, maybe you can all start uh, getting together at somebody's house each week. You can bring your own sushi, you can sit around and talk, and do the same old things that you were going to do at the buffet, but rather you're saving a bunch of money in the process and still having a pretty fun experience. Again, you're gonna start to get creative as you play around with some of these ideas and you start to think that, hey, my money is limited right now. I only have 10% of my after-tax pay every single week or every single month that I get to play around with. But at the end of the day, you get to do whatever you want with it. Doesn't matter. Go and do whatever you want. I was gonna go through some examples here, but honestly, it's gonna be different for everybody. Do whatever you want. Or maybe... You're the type of person who says, you know what? I want something kind of bigger. It's gonna cost me about $220 or so, or $200 or so, and I wanna save up for it. So what I'm gonna do for the next, uh, going back to the example here, let's just say that it's $700 a week and $70 is the 10% per week. Let's just say that you think, you know what? I'm not gonna do anything for three weeks. I want something that costs $200. Uh, over the course of three weeks, I'm gonna get uh, $210. I'm gonna save up for three weeks. I'm not gonna do a whole lot other than just be very diligent about paying down my debt and paying for my necessities and my needs, and then, when I have my $210 after saving for the $70 per week for three weeks, I'm going to go out and buy that $200 item. That's totally fine too. But remember, stick to the 10%. As soon as you go over, guess what? As soon as you start to violate the rules, it becomes very easy to violate the rules every single time. Please be careful with that because as soon as you break the rules once, it's easy to come back the next week and say, you know, last week, ah, whatever. I went over by 5%. Who cares? I'll do it again. Not a big deal. Well, guess what? All those little 5% mistakes, all that extra little $5 here, $10 there, $12 there, all of that stuff adds up. And before you know it, a few months later, all of a sudden you've realized you just blew $500 on extra little things because you went over and you weren't uh, disciplined throughout the process. And again, I know it's not fun. I know budgeting is never fun to talk about. I know paying down debt is like, honestly, the worst thing to talk about because realistically, who wants to do it? Nobody. That's why nobody pays down their debt. That's why everybody carries tons and tons of credit card debt. That's why we all have a mortgage. That's why we all pay rent every single month. That's why we all finance our phones. Why? Because why would we want to pay it off when we can just pay uh, monthly installments of a little tiny bit and we can take the rest of our money and go out and have tons of fun with it? Makes sense, right? That's why everybody is in debt so much because... Why? Why not be? It's fun to be uh, free. It's fun to take that money and go do fun things with it rather than actually paying down debt. So anyway, hope this one gives you a little bit of a money hack and kind of gives you a better perspective on what you can do with this money that you're actually uh, saving and actually using to pay down that debt for you. And I can tell you this much, when you get on the other side of debt, you will feel so free. You'll feel like, wow, there's like fresh air over on this other side, right? You'll feel very excited. You'll feel thrilled about it. And at the same time, if you stick to this and allocate 10% of your take-home pay each and every week or month or bi-weekly, whatever it happens to be, for your joy account, I can tell you this much. You're going to be pretty joyful as you go out and you spend that 10% or do whatever you want with it. You're going to feel pretty excited. At the same time, when you're paying down that debt aggressively, you're going to feel pretty, pretty excited and very encouraged. So again, hope this one helps you out. Again, please make sure to subscribe down below. If you haven't done so yet, share the video with your your friends, family, social media, and go back and check out some of the other thousands and thousands of videos here on the channel. And go back and check out some of those other uh, budgeting videos that I have here as well. Like I said at the beginning of this video, you need to find something that works best with you, your personality, and your personal situation. It's going to be different for literally everybody, but find something that works best for you and stick to it. And I can tell you this much, if you just stick to a plan, whatever the plan happens to be, eventually you will come out the other side. You just got to stick to a plan. So anyway, hope that helps you out. Again, subscribe, share, and go back and check out the other videos here on the channel. Until next time, have a good one. I wish you the best of luck, and I will continue coming back with more money hacks and twists on popular budgets to help you out in any way that I can. Enjoy and have fun. I'll catch you again later in the